Him, Jesus, who reigns forever and ever, and of his reign there shall be no end. His kingdom is from everlasting to everlasting. He himself, the king, is the king eternal. In Timothy, he says, is the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. To him be the glory and honor forever and ever amen because our king never dies he reigns forever and ever hallelujah to jesus amen shall we just appreciate the lord this hour through prayer and and and, and open as well in a word of prayer and invite him that this ministration today will bring glory to you his name your spirit will be impacted as it has touched me this word here today in the name of Jesus. Father, we raise prayer before you. We raise intercession at this hour before you on behalf of your people. We raise supplication to you, the God who reigns forever and ever, that this day may bring glory to your name, that they may be the God who intervene in the affairs of humanity, may interfere and intervene in the name of Jesus, the God who reigns throughout all the kingdom of this world in the name of Jesus, son of the living God, the God who is higher above all, people, the God who is stronger than any other in the name of Jesus. In fact, you are the El Elyon, the strongest of the strong. There is no comparison to you. Worship to you, almighty God. The pillar of the earth are the Lord, and the whole world you have set it upon them. This is how great and powerful you are, O King of glory. At this hour, we say receive worship. The God who reigns forever and ever. At this hour, receive a 
our praise. Receive adoration. May you intervene in the lives of your people, in our lives in here. In the name of Jesus, have your way and glorify yourself by your spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, receive the ministration of this word and the prayer as a service on our behalf. May you, the God of Israel, respond and touch the lives of your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to go and bring a word of exhortation at this hour in Jesus' name. And I will want you to follow carefully. And if you have to tag somebody, let somebody be tagged and understand what we are sharing here today. Let somebody connect with the prayer and share this so that uh, somebody else may benefit and Jesus be glorified in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Bible says uh, uh, in Luke, we're going to read the Luke chapter 19 from verse 41 to verse number 44. Luke chapter 19 from verse number 41 to verse number 44. Hallelujah. Luke 19, 1, 9. Glory to Jesus. We're sharing something and then pray once we... Uh, all on the same page with this reminder or this information for a, a spiritual empowerment and let it lead us into prayer and let the Lord be glorified in Jesus' name. The Bible read in Luke chapter 19 and verse number 41. It says, now as he drew near, uh, as, he, as he drew near, he saw the city. And wept over it. The city being referred to there is Jerusalem. Verse 42 saying, this is Jesus in weeping and saying, if you had known, even you, especially this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. And we are praying here today, trusting God. When things are happening and it's our hour of visitation, we don't want to miss out in the name of Jesus. Verse 43 says, For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side. Verse 44, and level you and your children within you to the ground, and you will not leave, and they will not leave in you one stone upon another. Why? Because you did not know the time of your visitation. The reason these things will happen to Jerusalem, being attacked and being and, and experience all of this that Jesus is saying, is because they missed on their hour of visitation. They missed that the Messiah has come. They missed that indeed when they follow the Messiah, they could avoid some of these things that he's saying. But then they miss out because because they did not recognize their hour of visitation in the name of Jesus. Because they did not recognize that God has sent already the Messiah. Because when the Messiah came, did not come according to their expectation. The Messiah did not come according to their frame of reference, how they were expecting the Messiah to come. So the way Jesus came, came, they miss out on Jesus being the Messiah because of how he came. I hope we are still together. So, uh, they, you, because you did not know the time of your visitation. 
Glory to Jesus. There are times where God has already answered prayer, sending you the channel through which your prayer will manifest. The answer to your prayer will manifest, but you disregard the channel. You disregard the people because of how they were packaged. Because of how they came and they were packaged and you miss out on your time of visitation. You miss out that God has already answered. You are crying out to God, Lord, will you answer me? God is saying, I have already answered you. It's just that you did not see the answer because of how it was packaged when it came to you. You are trusting God for a man, for a husband. You are trusting God for, for, for this business, for a man. Maybe let's talk about you are trusting God for a spouse, or maybe a lady you are trusting God for a husband. But the way the men came, it did not meet your expectation. Your frame of reference, your man of your dream was not met by the package, by how the man who came to you, how he looked on the outward appearance. As a result, you miss out on your hour of visitation. Glory to Jesus. You miss out on the hour of visitation. I am talking about something that I've been taught to hear. Something that make believers miss on divine opportunity. Something that make people miss on divine opportunity. Something that make people miss their hour of visitation. Something that make people lose out and miss to recognize that their breakthrough is here. That the divine helper is here. But the way the divine helper appear, it was not according to your expectation. Hence, you refuse and reject that while the, the, the breakthrough, the visitation, the answer from God was locked in that person in the way they came and in the way they were packaged. So what is required of you is to walk in discernment to be able to recognize that indeed this is my hour of visitation in the mighty name of of Jesus. There are times where God answers us. There are times where God send partners. There are times where God send your, your life partner, your spouse, your, your future husband. There are times where you meet your future wife. But the way the people were packaged, the way they appear externally, you end up missing because they did not meet your mindset in terms of how the man must be, in terms of how the woman must be, in terms of how the business must be. God, I need the business. You have already promised that I will own multiple stores, multiple shops. But God, in answering, he opened an opportunity for you to be selling clothes from person to person. But selling from person to person is not the vision God showed you. God showed you multiple stores a chain of stores. How come can you be selling things now from person to person? And you, because of lack of discernment, you turn away from selling clothes from person to person. While in the ways of God, in the design of God, selling clothes from person to person is a training season to see your faithfulness, to see your commitment before the shop manifest. I hope we are following thee in the mighty name of Jesus. So I am praying here today that you shall not miss your hour of visitation. I am praying here for you today that you shall not miss recognizing divine op opportunity. That God will enable you by his spirit and touch your spirit to be able to discern and recognize divine opportunity. Recognize divine friendship. Recognize a divine helpers. Recognize your future husband. Recognize your future wife. Recognize which church you belong to. By the, not by the way things appear, but by discernment so that you do not miss on your hour of visitation. Somebody shout, Amen. 
Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Very sh uh, shortly, we're going to come back to that wonderful scripture in Luke 19, verse 41 to 44. But I just want to say something very critical that as human beings and even beyond human beings, as children of God, we need to be aware of. We serve God, our God among the attribute or the characteristic of God is that God is infinite. The nature of God is that God is infinite. By saying God is infinite, it means God is unlimited. When it comes to time, he is unlimited. When it comes to space, he is unlimited. When it comes to, to quantity, you cannot quantify God. You cannot tell how all God is. Is beyond time. Is beyond a human measure standard of measurement. God is beyond the human standard of measurement. God is immense. God is infinite, unlimited. You cannot locate God in one particular spot. God can manifest in a particular place, but that does not mean it is the stationary place where God is. God is unlimited, is infinite when it comes to time, when it comes to space, Pace, when it comes to quantity, when it comes to human standard of measurement, the nature of our God that we serve is unlimited, is infinite. You cannot box God in time, you cannot box God in space, you cannot box God in a particular location. He is infinite God, he is immense as God in the name of Jesus. But one thing you need to know as a child of God. Though God is infinite, unlimited in terms of time, unlimited in terms of space, unlimited in terms of quantity, God, when it comes to working here on earth, he works within time. God, unlimited. God, infinite. But when it comes here to earth, he works within time. That's why Galatians chapter 4, for example, Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 says, But in the fullness of time, when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law. Now, that Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 and 5. When the fullness of time had come, meaning God is working with time. There was a time that Jesus has to come, though God himself is unlimited when it's come to time. I hope you understand. The nature of God is you cannot quantify God. You cannot limit him from this time to that time. You cannot limit him from that age to that age. God is eternal. He is limitless. He is infinite. You cannot quantify him. But the operation of God here on earth happened within time. That's why Galatians 4, 4 and 5 say when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law. Number two critical point you need to understand, while here on earth, everything there is a time attached to it. There is a time attached to it. Ecclesiastics 3 verse 1 talked about to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven and he start listing them now everything we do here is connected to time god intervening in the lives of a person is connected to time to a particular season god moving in a, this particular way in a place where people are longing it's linked to time god doing that doing this is linked to a particular time now as a child of god one thing you need to be aware and very sensitive about it is when is god moving where is the move of God and how, what is God doing in this particular season? Because there is something God is doing. There is something God is saying in a particular season. That why is not everything God is saying, though everything in the Bible, but what is God saying at a particular time? That is the main message that will make you carry, that will carry you over to the next season to, and push you in life. Is what God is saying at that particular 
particular time to that particular person in the name of Jesus. God unlimited, infinite, but here on earth, he works with time. It works with time. Another example before we go back to the other scripture is in the book of Acts. I'm just explaining to bring uh, this counsel to you. And in the, in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 1, it say when the day of Pentecost had fully come, there was a sound from heaven. It means it was a particular time. God could have sent the Holy Ghost any other time. But in the operation of God here on earth, there is always a, the fullness of time. There is always when now it is time. There is always when it's an hour of visitation. There is always when it's God time to intervene. It's unlimited, but it intervenes within time. It's infinite, but it has a time in which which he intervened. He is God beyond the natural laws of, of, of the natural laws, but he, when he operates here on earth, is within a particular season, a particular time for a particular purpose. Now, if you want to, to walk with God as we connect to God by prayer, by applying his word in worship, in living a consecrated life, why? So that you do not miss out on your hour of visitation. Something that makes people miss on divine opportunity or miss out on their hour of visitation. One of those things which I want to deal quickly with before we pray, it is called the lack of discernment. The lack of discernment. The lack of discernment. Jerusalem could not discern, meaning the people in Jerusalem, when we read Luke 18, when Jesus is weeping over the city in Luke 19, verse 41 to 44, is weeping over that city. And one of the statements in verse 44 at the end, he says, because you did not know the time of your visitation. You could not recognize that the Messiah is here to he has come to visit you. You did not recognize that the Messiah has come. You have missed out on your hour of, this, uh, of visitation. Why? Because of lack of discernment, because of the way the Messiah came, did not fit their frame of reference. Somebody shout amen. Now, lack of discernment before we pray. Lack of discernment. First, let's quickly understand what is discernment. When you say somebody is walking in discernment or somebody is being discerning, what does that mean? It means being able to judge between right and wrong. It's one of the definitions. Between right and wrong. Or having a sense of seeing things for what they are are and not how they appear. Having the sense of seeing things of what they are and not how they appear necessarily. You mean you are going beyond the physique, beyond the appearance to the core of the matter to say indeed is this good and if it's good, is it good at the core? Is it good indeed or is it bad? It's not necessarily how things appear. Meaning you are seeing something at the core of the matter. Not necessarily how they look like physically. How they appear to your physical eyes. That's why I was giving an example earlier on of saying you are trusting God for the husband. The men that will come will not necessarily come with, uh, in the frame of reference that you have. According to your mindset, the way God will send him and package may not necessarily it be according to your mindset. But indeed, if you look beyond the appearance, beyond how the person is packaged, you will understand the operation of God and know indeed this is my hour of visitation. Glory to Jesus. So discernment. Discernment is very key in the life of people. Because with the, be, 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 uh, the, uh, without discernment, you may not be able to recognize divine opportunity. You may not be able to recognize divine helpers. You may not be able to recognize your hour of visitation. You may not be able to recognize that God 
God has already answered your prayer because of how things look. When things from God come to you, they do not necessarily, please underline necessarily, they do not necessarily come with the expectation from your mind, how you see things, your frame of reference, how you look at things. God has, has different ways of operating. Hence, his ways are not our ways. The way he operates is not the way we operate. The way he sees things is not the way we see things. The way he look at people is not the way we look at people. We look at the people on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. But when God looks at the heart and knows that this person is fit for that woman. He sent that man to that woman. But when the man appear, the woman may reject the person because of the outward appearance. Not necessarily go beyond the appearance into the heart to know him. This, this is a God send partner and let him give him a chance because this is my hour of visitation. I hope somebody is getting that. Because with discernment, when you are walking discernment, you are not going to miss out on great opportunity. You are not going to reject the people just because of how they appear. You will not forsake a church, a particular church, just because of how things are happening at the time. No. You have to go beyond the natural. You have to go beyond how things are happening. You have to go beyond the physical, the, the number, the quantity and go into the call and say, God, are you in this house? Are you moving in this work? Is this your servant sent a deed to me? Go beyond the, 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 the appearance. Go beyond the physical. Go beyond the, 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 what the naked eye is saying and go to the call and that what helps you to go to the call is discernment. You don't want to be like the people in Jerusalem of which Jesus weep of over the city and say, I wish you knew your hour of visitation. I wish you knew that I am the Messiah. I wish you knew that your Messiah you have been waiting is here. I wish you knew the prayer to your answer is here. I wish you knew the answer to your prayer is here. I wish you knew the way of God is here. I wish you knew. Weeping over Jerusalem in the name of Jesus because it did not come according to their frame of reference in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. So the scripture there and in Luke uh, number 19 verse 41 and 44, I am dealing with a subject that I've been titled here, something that make people miss on divine opportunity. Something that make people miss on their hour of visitation, which is a lack of discernment. And by God's grace, we are going to pray this hour. Let our spirit be, be, be stirred up. Let our spirit be made sensitive so that you don't see things just the way they appear. It is a contract. There are two contracts. But which one is God saying? It's not about the number necessarily. God he knows your future. He knows your today. He knows your yesterday. So how do you be led by God so that you make the right choice? In his call, to be able to design, to look beyond the natural, to look beyond how things appear, to look beyond the physical appearance, to look beyond the naked eye and go to the core and go to the center of the matter and say, indeed, this is what God is saying, discernment. And the lack of thereof Make people miss. Hence, I am saying something that make people miss their hour of visitation. Lack of discernment. Jerusalem, you did not know the time of your visitation. But you and I here, we are praying. We don't want to be found in a place where we miss out on our hour of visitation. Where we miss out on the time of our breakthrough. Where we miss out on divine opportunity because of how they appear with their, they, from our naked eye. Because the things from God to us, they do not, once again underline, necessarily come based on our mindset based on our frame of reference, based on how we see things. God does not look 
the way men look. Men look at the outward appearance. Is it appealing? Is it nice? Is it this? Men look at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. So for you, my answer, my breakthrough, my husband, is it this one indeed? Not the physique, not the trouser he came with, not the shoes he was wearing. Because when you look at the shoes, oh, you may miss out on your hour of visitation. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. It is always how things appear. And these things work in everything. Even in relationship, people don't come all the times packaged in the way that appeal to our eyes. Let you let design the package. Let design the contract. Let design the package. Let scan, eh, eh, scan the person. Not necessarily how they appear. They may appear sharp. Everything together outwardly. But inwardly, indeed they are not the one. Inwardly. It's a matter of time for you to go into ICU because of the shock the person will bring. Why? Because you limited your decision making on the appearance, not on the core of the person. And you should do by discerning in the name of Jesus. The woman at the a, at a, at a well in John chapter 4, she said, I perceive you are a prophet. It means it's not necessarily how you have appeared here. I perceive in that conversation. No, I, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. I perceive. The woman said to her, I perceive this one is a man of God. I perceive it was beyond the natural in the name of Jesus. So in business, let us do business with discernment. In relationship, let us be discerning. In making decision, let us be discerning in the name of Jesus. Paul, two more scripture before we pray. One of a powerful prayer, Paul prayed to the church in Philippi. He prayed this in, Philipp in, in Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. And we'll go on another scripture, then we begin with our prayers. Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10 says, And this I pray, that you la your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment. And all discernment. Why? Verse 10. That you may approve the things that are excellent. That you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Why am I praying this? That your love may abound more and more in, in, in knowledge. And what? And all discernment. That you may approve the things that are excellent. That you may be able to recognize what is the, 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 the excellent thing. What is the right thing. That you may be able to identify what is best for you. Not in necessarily with your human capacity and ability. But by discernment. Because by discernment it means the Holy Ghost is also involved in that decision making in the name of Jesus. That you may be able to distinguish which one to go with. All oh, discernment in the name of Jesus. So I am praying that the Lord will sharpen your spiritual senses in order to see things for what they are and not necessarily how they appear. Seeing the call, seeing the, the fact beyond the matter is not the physical appearance, is not how it came, but you have to go beyond how it came and go into the core. Jerusalem, yeah, I wish you knew your hour of visitation in the name of Jesus. So we need to walk in this and this we do by our dedication to God and by our life of prayer, continuous fellowship with God. 
call in prayer, in worship, in application of his word. It's causing us to grow and sharpen our spiritual senses so that we are able to discern. Another scripture before we pray. Uh, Hebrews chapter number 5 verse 14. Be able to discern. Be able to see beyond the physical appearance. Be able to see beyond how the things appear and go to the core of the matter. Not necessarily with your mind. Look at it with your, spirit, your eye of the spirit. Look at it from that way so that you know indeed this is the right thing. You may be able to approve that indeed this is the more excellent way. You may be able to distinguish the best. You may be able to differentiate things by designing in the name of Jesus. Hebrews chapter number 5 verse 14 say but solid food belong to those who are of full age. That is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil, to judge both good and evil, to be able to distinguish both good and evil, because good and evil may not necessarily appear to your naked eye as good or as bad in the name of Jesus. And you need to discern in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God. So your continuous fellowship with the Holy Ghost enables you to sharpen your spiritual senses and be able to discern your application of God's word in your life and the fellowship with God enable you to be able now to, to discern, to judge, to amplify things beyond the fact, beyond the physical appearance in the name of Jesus. I want us to begin to pray. I, 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 I trust God you understand the essence of this exhortation as we begin to pray that we may be able to design, to design when you make decisions, design relationship, design the church, design your business decision, design the transaction, selling of goods and services, design, design who you are dealing with, scan the people you are dealing with, Don't don't go with the physical appearance. Don't be like the people in Jerusalem of which Jesus wept and say, I wish you knew your hour of visitation. You have to discern. You have to discern in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want you to pray as we continue and pray. This is a, a, a very sensitive and critical matter for your spirit to be discerning so you make decisions not based on the flesh and not based on the sight, but be able to discern. Even Jesus himself he made decision when you read the prophecy about the Messiah in Isaiah number 11 going down. He said he will make decision not based on the sight of his eyes. He meaning he doesn't decide the way he hears. He doesn't decide by hearing but he discerns. So we pray for that grace of discerning upon your life as a child of God that your spirit may be sensitive that you may be able to discern in the mind the name of Jesus, that your spirit may be sensitive for you to be able to discern as innocent, discern as Nangam, so discern as Riran, so be able to discern in the name of Jesus. And I want you to begin to pray and pray like this. Oh Lord, by your spirit, make me discerning not to miss my time, my hour of visitation in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, by your spirit, make me discerning so that I do not miss my hour of visitation, my answered prayer in the name of Jesus. One more time, oh Lord, make me discerning by your spirit so that I do not miss my hour of visitation. My divine opportunity, my answered prayers in the name of Jesus. 
Begin to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we raise a prayer for your people, oh God, that we will not miss our hour of visitation, that we will not miss their hour of visitation, that they will not miss divine opportunity because of how things appear from the outward. In the name of Jesus, Son of the living God, I pray for a discerning heart. I pray for a discerning spirit upon your people in the mighty the name of Jesus, Son of the living God, so that they do not be like the people in Jerusalem at the time of Jesus that say, because you did not know the time of your visitation. So I pray for discerning a spirit upon your people. Let your people be discerning. Let Avela be discerning, discerning, discerning in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God. Let them walk in discernment. Let them make a business decision out of discernment in the name of Jesus. Let make them make decision for friendship, for marriage, oh God, for commitment to a relationship that will lead into marriage with discernment, with discernment by the power of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your people be discerning. Let your people be discerning. Discerning in business. Discerning in their calling. Discerning in their marriages. Discerning in relationship, uh, discerning in their work, uh, discerning, discerning so that they do not uh, miss uh, their hour of visitation, so that they do not miss uh, on their divine helpers uh, because of how they appear in the mighty name of Jesus. Be discerning by the power in the mighty name of Jesus that the Lord may make you to be discerning designing to be able to uncover the effect beyond how things appear. Don't only see how things they appear. That the Lord may touch your spirit in the name of Jesus. That you may be able to discern that this indeed is my divine helper. This indeed is my mentor. That you may be able to discern that indeed this is my pastor. That you may be able to discern that indeed that this is the way I should go. That you may be able to discern by the spirit of Jesus so that you do not miss on your hour of visitation in the mighty name of Jesus. We be, we're continuing to pray. Let the grace of to discern be so strong in your life. Like the way Paul prayed for the, for the, for the Philippians in Philippians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10. And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment. That you may approve the things that are excellent. That you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. That you do not make mistakes. That you may be able to recognize the right way. That you may be able to recognize the best way. That you may be able to distinguish factor. That you may be able to distinguish things. That we may go beyond how they appear to the core. It is called discernment in the name of Jesus. So I want you to to make this confession by faith, trusting that God will sensitize your spirit to be discerning in the name of Jesus and pray like this. Oh Lord, by your spirit, let your grace of discernment begin to operate in a powerful way in my life in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, by your spirit, let your grace of discernment Begin to operate in a powerful way in my life in the name of Jesus. One more time, my Father, my God, by your spirit, let your grace of discernment begin to operate in my life in a powerful way in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that upon your people, Lord, that you will touch their spirit by the Holy Ghost of the living God and make them sensitive and make them sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit that they may walk in discernment, that they may be discerning, that a grace to discern may be in operation in their life in a 
powerful way, in a mighty way. From this time, Lord, I pray, may you breathe life in their spirit by the Holy Ghost, the spirit of life. May you touch their spirit to make them discerning, to be discerning, to be discerning, to walk in discernment in a powerful way in the name of Jesus. I pray for Hillary to be able to discern, to walk in discernment in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for Nangamso to be discerning in the mighty name of Jesus, son of the living God. I pray for your people to be discerning, discern the way of doing business, discern by the power of God in the name of Jesus. I pray for Riransu. May you walk in discernment. May the Lord touch your spirit to recognize good dealings, best dealings, not necessarily how they appear, but by the, by, by the leading of God that you may be able to discern. I pray for you, Riransu Matebola, that you may be able to discern in, in, that, in your business transaction, in the name of Jesus, discern, 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 in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God. Not necessarily how things they appear, how people appear. Go to the core, go to the core, go to the core, in the name of Jesus, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, that you may pick up, uh, that indeed this is the one to do business with. Uh, this is the business I shall do. I pray in the mighty name of the for discerning in the mighty name of Jesus, Son of the living God, that you may be able to discern as a child of God. You may be able to discern in the circle as a child of God, having the sense of going beyond how things appear to the naked eye. Having the sense of seeing things for what they are, not necessarily how they appear. Having the sense of seeing the person for who they are, not necessarily how they package themselves when they came to you. Discernment in the name of Jesus. The lack of discernment has made people miss out on their hour of visitation. Have made the people miss out on their hour of visitation because of how things appear in the name of Jesus. That Jesus, when he drew near the city, he saw the city, meaning Jerusalem, and wept, Luke 19, 41 to 44, saying, if you had known, if you had known, even you especially, this your day, if you had known that I may answer to your prayer, if you had known that I am the Messiah that had come, if you had known that this person is your divine helper, if you had known that this person is your future husband, if you had known that this woman is your future wife, if you had known that this is your church, if you had known that this is the local house that you belong to, you will not miss out on your hour of visitation. If you had known. Look number 19 verse 41 to 44. And 44 say and, and level you and your children within you to the ground that they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation in the name of Jesus. As a child of God I don't want to miss out on what God is doing. I don't want to miss out on a divine opportunity because of how things look from my naked eyes. I need to discern as I interact with God in prayer, in worship, in the application of the word of God, in living a consecrated life, a holy life, my spirit being is becoming sensitive so that when I see things is not based on how they appear necessarily, I go to the core and say this is the one. I go to the core and say this is the business. I go to the core and say this is the one I need to deal with. I go to the core and say I recognize this is my divine helper. This is my mentor. This is my pastor. This is my local church that I need to belong to. I go beyond how I see things to the core. I discern in the name of Jesus. Because lack of discernment make people miss on their hour of visitation. Lack of discernment make people miss 
on their divine opportunity. Lack of discernment make people miss when divine helpers have come. Lack of discernment make people miss on their future spouse because of how they came at first sight, how they appear at first sight. They, it did not meet their frame of reference. Jerusalem, the people in there, Jesus did not fit their frame of reference on how the Messiah should come and what the Messiah should do. They miss out on that. And Jesus wept over that city. I wish you knew your hour of visitation. I wish you knew your hour of visitation in the name of Jesus. Glory to Jesus. One more prayer before we go. In the name of Jesus, Son of the living God, that by discernment, let the Lord lead you into the right place at the right time in the name of Jesus. By dis uh, discernment, by the Holy Spirit, let the Lord lead you into the right place at the right time in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray, my Father, my God, in the name of Jesus, by your spirit, lead me in the right place at the right time in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, in the name of Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, lead me to be found, to be located in the right place at the right time in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, by the Holy Spirit, lead me to be found, to be located in the right place at the right time in the name of Jesus. I want you to begin to pray in line with that. Father, we raise a prayer even for your people at this hour in the name of Jesus. That the Lord, you will lead them, O oh God, for the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That Lord, by your spirit, you will lead them to be located in the right place, to be located in the right time, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray by your spirit, you will lead some men and women here to be located in the right company, to be found in the right company at the right time. They will not make a mistake and miss out on divine opportunity in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for your people that by your Holy Spirit, you will lead someone, oh God, to all oh, to be found in the right place at the right time, not miss out on the opportunity, not being beyond, not being ahead, not not being late, but being in time and in the right location by the Spirit of Jesus in the name of Jesus. For the steps, the scriptures say, of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delight in his way. Lord, I pray for men and women here today that you may lead them, Lord, into the right place. That you may read them, Lord, in the right place. That you may lead them in the right place. That you may lead them in the right place at the right time time in the name of Jesus. Connecting to the right people in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God, that they may not miss on their hour of visitation. So I pray, O King of glory, in the name of Jesus, for every life here today, let them not miss their hour of visitation. Let them not miss their divine air pass. Let them not miss the right opportunity. Let them not miss, O oh God, their hour of visitation. O oh God, because because of lack of discernment in the name of Jesus. I pray may you sharpen their spirit men. I pray may you sharpen their inner men to be able to discern, to be able to look to beyond the physical appearance into the core of the matter. I pray they may be able to judge, to differentiate, to distinguish what is the best and what is not. I pray in the name of Jesus, even in terms of relationship, let them distinguish that in this, this is my future spouse. This is my hour of visitation. This is the pastor. I, it doesn't matter how they came, how they appear, but I go beyond their physical appearance. So I pray for that grace upon your people, upon every woman. I 
upon you, Chino, I pray by the power of Sataba, in the mighty name of Jesus, that Chino, you'll be able to discern in the marketplace uh, that this is the right dealing. I pray for that grace by the spirit of Jesus, that your spirit will be quickened by the power of God, that let your spirit, I am praying for you, Chino, that your spirit will be touched and quickened by the power of God, in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God. I pray for you, Cassie Tivana, that your spirit will be touched. I pray for you that by the spirit of God, your inner man will be sensitive to recognize divine opportunity, divine connection. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray for every person here today. Let them be able to recognize right opportunity. Let them not miss their hour of visitation. Because of lack of discernment. Let them not see things from the flesh. But let them see things by the spirit of God. By their spirit, oh God. By discernment in the name of Jesus. That's what we are praying. They are saying there is something that makes people miss their hour of visitation. They are answered prayer. They are divine helpers. They are divine opportunity because of how things appear and by lack of discernment. So as a child of God, when you wake up, you pray week in, week out. Oh Lord, let my spirit be discerning. Because we will see that even if you read in Isaiah chapter 11, the prophecy about the Messiah, I think in verse 3 or so, it says he will not decide by the hearing of his ears, nor by the sight. Why? What is that? Discernment. Meaning when things appear physically like this, I am not making decision based on how they appear. I discern. I am not making decision based on what I heard. I discern discernment and the lack thereof has brought people in a place where they miss opportunity they miss assistance they miss their godly spouses because of how the person came dressing it was not fitting their frame of reference no my husband cannot be dressing like that no those are physical appearance that can change discern Woman of God, discern, daughter of most high God, discern, discern, discern. Don't look at things how they appear. Go to the core of the matter. God says in the book of Samuel, I do not look as men look. Men look at the outward. I do not see as men see. Men look at the outward appearance, but God looks where? At the heart. May that grace come upon you where you don't see things from the outward appearance, but you are seeing from the heart. The core of the matter, the core of the pastor, the core of the dealing, the core of the answer, the core of the church. Go and see beyond the physical appearance into the core. Discernment in the name of Jesus. So that you do not miss on your hour of visitation. In the same way where Jesus wept over Jerusalem, if they knew, if they knew that I was the Messiah, if they knew this is the Messiah, if they knew he had come not according to their frame of reference, according to their expectation, he came according to the way God does things. One of the training as a child of God is to be able to discern. Not everything that is good is good indeed. And not everything that appears bad from your eyes is bad indeed. Design, go to the core. Go beyond the physical appearance, beyond the naked eye, and be able to judge, to have the sense by the leading of the Holy Spirit beyond what you see, beyond what you hear, but be able to design in Jesus' name. It is time we connect again tomorrow. Remain blessed and preserved. May the Lord watch over you. For he who watch over Israel does not sleep nor slumber. May the Lord watch over you and preserve you this night in the name of Jesus. And preserve you in the morning in the name of Jesus. And preserve you throughout the day. 
against devices of darkness. May the Lord preserve you from falling into sin. The Lord preserve you from making wrong decisions. The Lord watch over you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance towards you and grant you his peace in Jesus' name. Until we connect again tomorrow, same hour, same platform, same place, in Jesus' name. Amen.